Hello learners, previously we read about learning characteristics and factors. Today we will discuss about how children learn. Every child has his or her own learning style due to individual differences. You must be knowing individual differences, the differences which we get from individual to individual because of every human being varies. So, as a teacher, we should understand the ways and spirit in which children feel comfortable and do their best. Otherwise, the children feel humiliated, overburdened or discouraged. They develop the feeling of boredom and don't take interest and want to get out of doing the things which we want them to learn. So, as teachers, we should break the long downward cycle of fear and distress and should Basically, we should train the mind rather than strain. The picture is depicting the same. Children learn not only from schools, but can acquire a wide range of experiences from the world around them. And the results can be positive as well as negative. So, we should have the knowledge of processes which help the students to gather experiences in natural way by making learning process easy, adaptable and enjoyable. Now let's discuss about different ways through which children learn. Firstly we will discuss about imitation, then observation, then trial and error, participation and learning by doing, discovery learning and lastly problem solving. Now what is imitation? You must have heard the story of capsular and monkey, imitation just can be seen in that. The term imitation is derived from a Latin word imatio, which means copying. Imitation is the act of copying the behavior of someone observed. In the most common learning rule, and this type of behavior can be observed among animals as well as among human beings. As we train our pets to say hello, to sit or to stand up. This is the way of imitation. They do it by imitating us. The child consciously or unknowingly may imitate a person for whom he or she has strong liking. Such a person becomes a model either real or symbolic. Usually kids copy their teachers, their favorite heroes or heroines. These all are example of imitation. Imitation serves as both a learning and a social function because new skills and knowledge are acquired and communication skills are improved by interacting in social and emotional exchanges. Imitation is the actual performance of behavior that has been observed. Now we will discuss about models. Children are prone to imitate models that are more intelligent, skillful, knowledgeable than themselves and others around them from whom they feel influenced. Children have a broad range of influences. They get influenced by parents, their teachers, peers and older siblings or classmates. When a child has the choice, he is likely to select model with similar attributes and ignore those that have little in common with. There are two types of models, symbolic and exemplary. What are symbolic models? Symbolic models are presented through oral or written instructions pictorially or through combination of verbal and pictorial devices like addition, subtraction in mathematics, alphabets in English. The model is a good example of pictorially presented models are television, movies, radio, exemplary models. Exemplary models can be pictorial models or represented through verbal description. A child is given an example whether it be a superhero, next door neighbor or a friend and are told that these model actions are good and should be imitated or in some cases bad and should be avoided. Like exemplary models are like Sachin Tendulkar, PT Usha etc. Ways to strengthen imitation. How a teacher can strengthen the imitation? Let's have a look. The teacher should provide direct praise or incentive statements like you can run like PT Usha, he plays cricket like Tendulkar, wow you write so beautifully, encourages the child to repeat the actions again and probability of happening of the action increases. Next is 
satisfying consequences if the behavior and the actions of the child are as per acceptable social norms they get satisfying outcomes the chances of the action to be repeated become more if a child gets appreciation from his parents by rhyming a poem he will do it again and again to get the satisfying consequences next is vicarious reinforcement also helps in imitation vicarious reinforcement is basically our tendency to repeat or duplicate behaviors for which others are being rewarded here is an example of the productive use of vicarious reinforcement sonu and monu both are in first grade they both have to work individually but they are sitting next to each other the teacher sees that sonu is working in wrong direction monu however is actually trying in right direction although with limited success the teacher comes over to both of them and says monu it's great that you are close to your goal sonu notices the way of working of monu and attempts to work in required direction means when we appreciate or scold others and the person in front standing gets affected this is the example of vicarious reinforcement now how imitation effects people can learn by observing others it can be said modeling like girls at adolescent want to imitate their favorite heroines boys their favorite heroes learning is an internal process that may or may not lead to change in the behavior means learning is permanent changes in our behavior every learned thing cannot bring permanent change in behavior so everything cannot lead to change in behavior behavior eventually becomes self regulated by practicing and by imitating again and again behavior becomes self regulated the inhibitory effect of imitative behavior results either in the suppression that is inhibition or appearance disinhibition of previously acquired deviant behavior the eliciting effect is related to responses of the model not to his or her behavioral characteristics per states an illustration of the eliciting effect is the mass behavior like when there is cricket match we all scream like others because we get so much our behavior get elicited and we all say hurray hurray go for runs as a teacher how imitation learning can be helpful we all know imitation is natural so try to become the model for students by following positive aspects of behavior like humbleness soft spoken fairness etc as a teacher nevertheless do not expose your weaknesses to your students while teaching indian culture social science literature and telling stories to children always emphasize the positive aspects of the significant characters for imitation when any student imitates positive behavior try to recognize it by saying superb excellent back up and by or by providing any reinforcement next method is observation observation is a common and natural method of human learning the learning by observing others is also called vicarious learning social learning or modeling observational learning is a type of learning that occurs as a function of observing retaining and replicating novel behavior executed by others observation is different from imitation higher animals especially humans learn through observing and imitating others in imitation the observer copies and reproduces the behavior of the model but in observational learning we think and judge and learn not only how to do certain things but also what the consequences of our action are likely to be observation involves four basic processes first one is attention process once characteristics such as sensory capacities arousal level sensory capacities means how the person uses his senses in which way he gets aroused perceptual set how he perceive the things and what are the past reinforcement for him or her affect attention then retention process remembering what you paid attention to including symbolic coding 
एंड रिहर्सल मेंटल इमेजेस कोगनेटिव ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मोटर रिहर्सल वी हैव टू रिटेन द मटेरियल व्हिच वी हैव अटेंडेड बिफोर नेक्स्ट इज रिप्रोडक्शन प्रोसेस बीइंग एबल टू रिप्रोड्यूस द इमेज व्हिच वी हैव रिटेंड प्रीवियसली इंक्लूडिंग फिजिकल कैपेबिलिटीज एंड सेल्फ ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन and next is motivation or reinforcement process includes having a good reason to imitate the person should have some reason some purpose to imitate now i would show all these processes through a very nice video let's watch a video so students now you have seen how all the four processes are organized in a manner to in observation learning next is trial and error learning this type of learning occurs when an organism attempts to learn by undertaking a number of alternative behaviors that can be trials and makes a number of incorrect choices errors before the desired behavior is learned basically trial and error learning is stamping in the right or correct responses and stamping out the incorrect responses trial and error learning involves a desire to reach some sort of goal it means there should be drive to reach a goal as well as there should be a goal by the learner it involves trying a number of different behaviors like there should be some block some hindrance and the child or student will try to discover or will try to overcome those hindrances by exploring and when the correct response is finally achieved it is rewarding for the organism that is known as reinforcement after getting the reward the child will do that again and again without making any mistake receiving a reward of some kind leads to repeated performance of the correct response strengthening the association between the behavior and its outcome every time the incorrect responses are stamped out the frequency of behavior increases in positive side once learned the behavior will usually be performed quickly and with fewer errors trial and error learning is also referred to as an instrumental learning and more recently operant learning edward thorndike a psychologist who conducted basically he was an american psychologist and conducted his many experiments on cats by putting her in a cage or in a puzzle box the puzzle box was having a latch and that latch was to be pushed up by the cat to get out of it as the cat was hungry and a fish was putting outside and cat was to take that the cat had to be hungry and they had to be rewarded for acquiring the correct behavior food when it escaped from the puzzle box initially the cat escaped the liver was pushed down after a number of different behaviors in random manner the cat tried haphazardly it is unlikely at this stage the cat made any connection between the liver and its escape until it had done it a couple of times 
Once the connection was formed, the cat would press the lever deliberately as soon as it was placed in the box. Thorndike gave three laws of learning. We will discuss them one by one. First is law of effect. Law of effect means the role of reward and punishment affects the connection. For a particular action, if the child gets reward, the frequency of that behavior increases. The child will do that behavior again and again. But if the child gets punishment, then uh, that behavior will be removed gradually. Then next is law of exercise. Law of exercise means repetition of the activity strengthens the connections. When we practice, when we do a thing again and again, the connection becomes strong. And law of like, if you drive daily, you become more comfortable in driving. Law of exercise is divided in two parts, law of use and law of disuse. Law of use means strengthening of connection of stimulus, cause and response the behavior by repetition. A child learns to write so beautifully because of practice. When he repeats the writing skill again and again, he learns to write beautifully. Law of disuse relates to the weakening of connection when not used frequently. A, a person feels uncomfortable while driving if he has not driven the car from last 5 or 10 years. Law of uh, learning third is law of readiness. One should be ready in all senses. The person should be physical ready means the per person should have right physical condition. The person should be mentally alert, should be conscious alert and emotionally he should have proper feelings and right kind of emotions. Fourth one is participation or doing. It is a way of combining thinking and reasoning with the practical act of manipulating objects for solving a problem. It promotes self-learning and self-assessment. Here, the teacher works as mentor or guide. Here, the student has to do on her own, just he gets the direction or guidance from the teacher. It's a way of collective inquiry into best practices in teaching and learning. It is action oriented and quickly turn aspirations into actions. In it, students pool combined resources for successful completion of the task means they use many things together, they learn to share, they learn to cooperate, they take care of each other. It involves searching, debating and coming out with innovative and alternative ways of solving problem. When children work together, they try to do something new, they do the things in different manner. It helps in developing social qualities like helping, sharing, fellow feeling and accepting responsible. This kind of learning makes the students responsible and also cooperative. It facilitates in developing personal qualities like self-confidence, self-estimate and courage to ask questions. With the help of this procedure, with the help of this learning method, the child comes to know where he stands. Next is learning through discovery or inquiry. Learning through discovery is a method of inquiry based instruction. Jernon Brunner propounded the discovery learning in the 1960s. Discovery learning takes place in problem solving situation where the student draws on his or her own experience and prior knowledge. It is a method of instruction through which students interact with their environment by exploring and manipulating objects and performing experiments. It's a method of instruction through which students interact with their environment by exploring and manipulating objects and performing experiments. Now, there are principles of this method. First is principle of activity principle of logical reasoning, principle of proceeding from known to unknown, principle of searching for alternatives. Principle of activity means to do something new, to discover something, the student has to be active physically as well as mentally, only then the this is the base of any discovery learning. Principle of logical thinking means learning is always in a particular line of direction. Learning cannot happen haphazardly. The thinking should be rational 
to achieve, to reach to some goal. It's very easy when we proceed from known to unknown because easy to difficult going is easy, is helpful in learning the thing. So, we should always proceed from known to unknown. Principle of purposeful experiment means we should have some purpose to conduct the experiment only then we can have some specific kind of learning. Principle of searching for alternatives, there are a variety of solutions and we have to search which solution suits our discovery. This is all about principle of discovery learning. Next is problem solving. A problem always starts with where, when, how, what, who, why and problem solving is a cognitive process means it is an intellectual process directed at achieving a goal where no solution method is obvious to the problem solver. Features of problem solving are firstly we have to set a goal which is to be achieved means there should be a felt difficulty, there should be a felt problem and to overcome that problem we will make a goal. A felt difficulty need to reach the goal, the child will feel some difficulty, some hindrance to reach the goal, then the child will feel problem. Challenging the felt difficulty through conscious, planned and purposeful attack, the child will challenge the felt difficulty by making conscious efforts, will plan some activity and will do some purposeful work to get over the felt difficulty. Then last is reaching the goal or arriving at satisfactory solution to the problem at hand. When the child gets solution by conscious efforts, doing it in a planned manner, the solution is found. Now we will discuss about the steps in problem solving learning. Identifying and defining the problem, firstly the student will identify, will look that what is the problem and then will define it means will put some fence around the problem, the problem should not be very fast. Then analysis of problem means how the problem will help further, how the problem will help the child that is to be analyzed, in which manner. Stating clearly the relationships between different concepts, how different concepts are interrelated with each other or affect each other, this is to be stated while stating the problem. Formulating hypothesis and testing the hypothesis. Hypothesis is basically a shrewd guess, an assumed answer. Firstly, the child will assume some answer and then will test the hypothesis. After testing the hypothesis, the results are verified. These are the steps of problem solving method. How a teacher can help in problem solving uh, method? Let's have a look. The teacher will create the problem situation. To make the students learn through problem solving method, firstly, the teacher will create the problem situation. To act freely, to deal with the problem without fear, the teacher will create fear-free atmosphere in the classroom means the students should be open, the students should be encouraged to ask questions in the class. The teacher will assist the student in perceiving means will help to have insight in the problem, defining means the teacher will put, will help the student to put a check around the problem. And then after stating the problem, the statement of problem is, will be given with the help of teacher. Then help the student in analyzing the problem. The teacher will help the student that how the problem will be helpful in future. Then the teacher will encourage the student to formulate and to test the hypothesis by assuming good answers, by assuming nearby answers, by making shrewd guesses. Help the student to develop critical thinking, means thinking from every angle, open-mindedness to have a broad vision and a spirit of inquiry and discovery. So this is all about the methods of learning, how children learn. In the last, I would like to say, expecting the children of the same age to learn from the same material is like expecting all children of the same age to wear the same size clothing. So we should accept 
that there are individual differences. Every child has his own pace of learning. So, every child learns in a different manner. Thanks.